Hey guys, Mike, Iron Trap Garage, and we're actually in my home garage today. So since we got the run stand going, um, Matt had a pretty good idea of taking my flathead, putting it on the run stand, and getting it running before we drop it into my project. So I have some work to do before we can do that. Um, this came out of a 37 that had about 60,000 original miles on it. Um, the engine was pulled out. There's a recondition tag here on it. So I'm not 100% sure how many miles this engine has, how good a shape it is. Um, the guy showed me a video of it driving off the trailer into his garage, but it didn't heat up. I don't know, it may overheat. It may smoke really bad when it gets up to temperature. So today what we're gonna do is one, do some diagnostics on the engine. I have my compression tester. We're gonna do a little compression test to see if I'm wasting my time before we even go any further. And then I'm gonna pull the oil pan off the intake off and try and dig any sludge out that's in here from its sitting and we're going to put Petronics in. So I have the 42, I think, believe this is 42 to 48, got this uh, crab style distributor. I do need to change the timing cover from a three bolt to a two bolt, but I'll do that when I pull the oil pan off and then we'll be putting Petronics in this distributor and then I picked up these cool uh, spark plug wire organizers. I'm using a Petronics spark plug wire kit to run, um, these are like cut to fit. So I'll be running spark plug wires and hopefully at the end of this video, this thing will be ready to take over to the shop, put on the run stand and then run it in. We're also gonna work on flushing um, through some water through the coolant system to see uh, what kind of buildups in there. So actually I have a funny way that we're gonna do a compression test. I'll pick the camera up and uh, show you guys uh, how we're gonna do this. So I realized I don't have an extra battery. I had an old motorcycle battery, but I don't know what happened to it. I was hoping I could use it just enough to do a compression test. I don't have one. So instead of pulling a battery out of my daily driver, I have a bunch of Milwaukee batteries. These are 18 volt, but they are marked very clearly positive and, or positive and negative, I had that backwards. So I don't know if you guys didn't know this, but you can actually use this to start your car if you have a dead battery. So I have the ground hooked up to the exhaust manifold, the starter lug, I actually already tested it, so it does work. So I'm gonna get my compression tester hooked up on this back cylinder, and we're gonna go through both sides and see if this engine's even worth using. So this engine claimed to be rebuilt from the guy that I bought it from. He said the family he bought the car from uh, went through and redid a bunch of stuff, and uh, the distributor that's currently in Beautiful um, actually came off of this engine. So we know the distributor was gone through and rebuilt. Uh, it looks like it has a new fuel pump. The water pumps look brand new. Uh, we tried to use the carburetor on the run stand, but uh, we think the accelerator pump just died. So they may have gone through the carb and cleaned it, but the accel paper, accelerator pump just died from age. So I got the ground hooked up, compressor tester in. Let's see what she does. pounds it's not terrible I killed that battery pretty quick but we got one done so I have 90 95 pounds of compression which is pretty good um, I'm gonna change to a different cylinder and we'll see what it's at Alright, we're gonna try this compression test again. Let's see where we're at. I have it hooked up to my car battery this time, so hopefully this works a little bit better. So that cylinder is only at 60. We may have some problems here. May have a dead cylinder. That one's eighty five PSI. Well, that cylinder's got a hundred and ten in it. So 
this for the front cylinder. It's low. Let's go to the other side. We'll see what they're at. Front cylinder is low too. That front one's at 70. That one's 90. at 60 as well. Hmm. That one is 115. So now I'm going to uh, wheel this outside. Um, just feeling inside the head, there's a lot of, Let's see if I can pull a piece out. I can't pull a piece out, but we at least get a shot of it. There's some gunk in there. So I don't think I'll be using these heads um, permanently. I'm trying to find some uh, 21 stud factory aluminum heads to run on this, because finding 21 stud speed equipment is pretty tough. <clears throat> and the other thing is I need to pull these three studs out to put an offset generator bracket to run any type of intake on this. So I'll be tr hopefully pulling these heads off, but I do want to flush it so we don't clog up the run stand radiator because there is some gunk in here. I might po pop these water pumps off so we're not running any gunk through the water pumps. But I'll uh, get the generator off, pop these water pumps, and we'll see what it looks like. Oh, it's all the way down. I guess they put too short of a belt on this thing. It's, wow, that is tight. Ooh. Might just take the generator all the way off. Alright, that's off. This block. It's probably usable, but it definitely needs to be flushed. Holy cow. So these water pumps move really freely. So I'm definitely gonna be reusing them. Probably I just have to get new water pump gaskets, which is no biggie. We probably have some at the warehouse too. So I'm gonna push this outside. Actually, I'm gonna grab my vacuum first and try and vacuum up. Some of that crud, good lord. All right, I vacuumed a little bit out. Hose set up here. If the metal lock comes out, I'll pull out the pressure washer. I got this bin to try and catch any uh, large pieces. Oh yeah. Some floaties already. This is the side that had a lot of deposits in it.
Holy cow. That's a lot. <laughs> oh boy. So it's not bad. I've seen worse. But it's not great looking. There's like gross sludge everywhere. So all that's going to need to be cleaned. But main thing is I'm going to take a socket and put it on the crank pulley. And just make sure all the valves and everything are moving so at least I know that <clears throat> I don't have a problem somewhere else that's why we have low compression the, the rings may just be stuck because it's so old I believe the I believe the car was sitting since the 60s so I mean it may just be a case of stuck rings but it starts still and it may just need to be run to get it um, freed up going to work on installing the Petronics in the distributor. But I understand it's pretty simple. Hey. There we go. So there's that. And then this is what's going in. Super simple. So I got it all apart. The igniter plate does not want to sit in the housing, so I'm just carefully sanding it so it drops right in there because right now it does not. I would assume you want some of a, a little bit of a tighter fit so it can't move very easily, but it doesn't want to go in at all. That does not seem correct. Oops. Carefully sanding it till it does. See, that should not be like that. There we go. So it's right like that. Got the timing screw back in. The other thing I'm going to do is put this screw here that would have been for the condenser mount in just so it looks normal and it kind of seals it off. Put that back in. 
And I need to clip in this ring still. There we go. Rotor back on. Cap. And we're done. Sweet. I'm going to pick the engine up, drain the oil pan, and put the two bolt timing cover on so we can use this. That was easy. I would imagine the pan's going to have some pretty gross stuff in it. It's currently running out like molasses. So there's nothing really solid. It's just a lot of liquidy goodness. So instead of taking the entire pickup tube off, Forgot that these have a screen, a pickup tube, and I should just be able to. Oh, oh yeah. I'll bring this over to you guys. Insides look pretty clean. Pickup tube has a hole. The screen has a hole in it. As you can see that. There's a hole in the pickup tube screen. So I guess I need a pickup tube screen too. Man, this thing is killing me. All right. So not all videos end victoriously. Some things I learned. This has a long snout cam. The two bolt timing cover does not, well the two bolt timing cover fits, the two bolt distributor does not. So I either need to find a spacer for the two bolt, which uh, Dick Spadero used to sell, or I think someone makes a three bolt to two bolt timing adapter because the snout of the distributor is actually has, is longer and it doesn't fit. I have a photo of how it fits in. Other thing I learned is I picked up these wire organizers for a flathead. When bolted on, they work great. But because I'm running an aftermarket um, intake, I'm mounting the distributor off to the side, puts the distributor right here on a 21 stud. Same with, same idea as with the later engines. Offset generator mount. Uh, this plug wire basically runs right into the distributor. So I have to find, there's, they make uh, wire organizers that don't have this bend. They're just straight. So I have to get a set of them so I can loop the wire around a little bit around the distributor. I need an oil pickup screen and I'm gonna to have to replace the timing gear on this because the timing gear is cracked. So I believe we're gonna, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I gotta see if I can get a timing gear and how hard it is to replace. Cause if I, I'm gonna take the timing gear cover off again to either put the three bolt back on or to use that adapter, I might as well just change it now. Uh, the other fear is I don't know if this engine's any good you know, there may still be the potential that it doesn't meet my expectations. I mean, some of the cylinders are a little low in compression, but I think that might just be a ring seating issue because the engine is old. Um, don't really know what I'm gonna do yet. I gotta do some thinking. I haven't really been asking a lot of people for advice or help. I've kind of just been trying to figure all this stuff out on my own, like hot rodding is. So I have some research to do. Um, the other thing I need to figure out is because I'm mounting the generator off to the side, this had a fan mounted to the generator. I'm going to be running a uh, later style fan with the two bolt, which mounts to the front of the uh, intake manifold. I have to run a two belt pulley and I'm not sure if I can run that style pulley on this crank yet. I need to do some research. So 
that's the end of the video. Thanks guys for watching. Hopefully the next video, this will be on a run stand. I'm going to be trying to get it to run because this is a little disheartening, but I got some stuff to learn to go through and figure out, but that's how hot riding is. So thanks guys for watching. Catch you later.